Draw my life? <laughs> no, speak my life. I wanted to do Draw My Life, but I tried doing it, but I'm not an artist at all. Like, I can't even draw a circle right. What? <laughs> On November 27, Mika was born in a beautiful country of Tokyo, Japan. At two years old, Mika became diagnosed with asthma. Mika had a really, really bad lungs that she was always in and out of hospital, and hospital became her second home. At four years old, Mika became a model. That became her first job. Although, Mika don't have a memory of starting. Six years old, my beautiful sister was born. My dad, my mother, my brother, and myself were really, really happy. And especially me, because I've always, always wanted a little sister. And God blessed us with me. Thank you. Enrolled in her first elementary school. She was there for several months and transferred to her second elementary school. She felt sad because she had to say goodbye to her teachers and her friends in her old school and start in a school where she doesn't know anybody. At the new school, they made fun of Mika because they see her on TV and magazines. And they always say, no, that's not Mika, she just said it's her. But it's really not her. And Mika felt sad, but it didn't turn her down. She always had a friend who, who was always so proud of what she did. And she made her school life positive and fun. Seven years old, her family and herself became a Christian. That's when her dad tell her about Jesus Christ and how he died for a sin. Even though Mika did not fully understand, she was thankful that she got that knowledge. Around the same age, her parents auditioned her for singing. She sang, I will always love you. But she didn't get it. I think that you can't really expect a little girl to sing something like that in front of a stranger. Get down. Get down. But her parents got really disappointed because she didn't do well, and she didn't get the gig. At age 10, Mika quit modeling. She and her family moved to America. And when she landed in America, she felt miserable because she didn't understand the culture, neither the language. Soon after, her parents enrolled her to her third elementary school. A little after, she transferred to her fourth elementary school. She was so tired of moving and transferring school that she couldn't really focus on her study. And then her parents enrolled her to middle school. Her brother is a year older than her, so he was at the middle school before her and he was showing her around the school and that made her really happy and comfort that her own older brother is in the school with her. But she worked really hard in her ESL class because she wanted to get out, get out of the ESL class. Eighth grade, her father's job got transferred. He got called to work in Intel in Arizona. That's where her parents enrolled her to a new middle school. Soon as she went to school, she felt like she's gonna fit in. Reality was, the first two weeks of school was very long. The school was a very good school, it was a beautiful school, and she was really encouraged to study harder. That's where she became an honor student. She made all A's. Her freshman year was very interesting, as she already had her friends from middle school. And it felt amazing, felt like a grown-up going to high school a freshman year and of course her older brother was there to support her and to comfort her thank you brother at her sophomore year her grandma passed away who was in Japan and he broke her family and her heart losing my family losing my grandma it was one of the most hardest time in my life
Soon after, her mother, her sister, brother went to Japan to clean her house. Soon after, my brother left to go back to state. Her mother was planning to have her two daughters stay in Japan with her, but as a single mother, she couldn't put two of her children into private school. So she said, Mika, go back to states and finish school there. After that, you can come back and live with me. Mika was so sad that she had to be away from her mother, first time in her life. So then she went back to Arizona to her brother and to her father. Mika felt lonely because there was not a woman that she can talk to to rely on. She felt like she missed out. She couldn't really concentrate on her schooling because her life was not on track. At age 16, she had a best friend named Anna in high school and they lived in the same apartment complex and went to the same high school. That made Mika's life really fun. Soon after, she met a guy named Fred and that's where Mika experienced her first innocent love. At age 17, she and her family decided to move back to California. When she got to California, she felt sad and miserable all over again because her life has been always about moving and transferring to new schools. She couldn't take it anymore. She was not an honor student, but she tried really hard to get good grades. At junior year, she really wanted to get out of ESL, which is English as a second language class. She thought that she had enough knowledge to get out, so they made her take a test to know where her English skills were and find out that she had higher grade enough to be at a regular English class. Only to find out she had the most hardest English teacher in the whole entire high school. She felt the challenge. At 18 years old, she became saved. She fully accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior, and that's where she felt like she belonged. Soon after, she got baptized, and she joined the choir and the youth program. She really loved everything about God, and everything is God to her. And when she was in school, she preached to all her classmates, and they started to call her call her a church girl and she really really knew that that was her destiny and she really wanted to become a minister. At age 18 she moved out of the house because where she was in was not a very good situation to be in. It was sad, miserable all over again but Mika felt free. Age 19 just a few months before she turned 20, she needed to go back to Japan to support her mother, who was sick, and her little sister, who was 14 at the time. She went back to Japan, that's where she felt the most loneliness, to say goodbye to everybody, including my brother, who I was very close to. When I got to Japan, I had nothing. I have no friends. No job, no nothing. Within the same week, her mother helped her get her job. And instantly, she got hired at Outback Steakhouse. Really enjoyed working there. She worked really, really hard every day. And the result catch up to her. She got employee of the year that first year. And that's where she met her pastor. really does work in a mysterious way and she got herself into a music school and then she also signed up for a gospel choir where she sang her soul and her heart out. She really wanted to be a gospel singer but her dreams got really darkened when she was diagnosed with depression but she knew she needed to hear God's word that's the only way that can cure her depression. She went back to States to visit her brother. She also met Fred.
and everything that they felt when they were a teenager came back, and that's where he proposed to her, and she said yes, and then she became engaged. After he came back to Japan, she didn't feel right that she was engaged. She didn't feel right where she was. She was not happy. Then one day she said, she can't take it anymore. She was having suicidal thoughts. She was harming herself and the others around her. And she knew that was not the life that God wants her to live. She knew that God was the only one who can fix her and to be there for her and to love her unconditionally. And she started to look for a church. After she found her, she found that church on the internet, she invited her sister and her friend to join her. When she went to that church, she felt something in her heart that she hadn't felt in so long. And she knew God was fixing her depression. She couldn't tell her that she was depressed because she kept that a secret for a very long time that she did not speak about it. And that killed her even more inside. Mika knew that whatever she had in her heart, she needed to let go and let God move and control her life from there. And she was committed back to God. And then God cured her depression and she is happy as ever. And I thank God for that that he brought me out of depression, that he got me out of all my miserable life and turned me into this girl. And I knew whatever was in the past was just a test for me. And then she broke up with her fiance and she broke his heart. She felt really bad for him but she felt like God was calling to do something else and that I needed to let go and Mika is focusing on God and she let go all, all of her things her life turned around she knew what was missing inside of her this whole time and it was God God forgave her for all the wrong things she did and the things she did to herself. It had a purpose for her. It took her a while to see, but now she knows what her purpose is. And now, Mika speaks the word of God through her YouTube channel and praying that somebody out there will hear what she has to say. It will be a testimony saying you're not the only one who was dark in a pit, who was depressed, who was sad, who felt like nobody loved you, felt like nobody appreciated you. But all along, God was right there with us. He took us a wrong direction to see. But God never turned his back on us. And she felt loved and accepted. So then she realizes God gave her even more blessings. And God has a purpose why she brought her here. And she is here to fulfill that. And she became a disciple. Whatever God has a plan for Mika, what she knows is that God has a perfect timing for everything. That she will not force anything. She will not go ahead of God. She will be right there waiting for God and to do His work. That is the story of Mika. Thank you guys for watching my videos and just don't give up on your life, you guys. I mean, I know it's hard. I know a depression is not a thing that you can get rid of in just one day. I'm still getting healed right now. 
And all I know is to trust God. Because wherever He leads me, that is my destiny. And I'm not scared of what's going to happen to my life. Because God has a full control of my life and He's always here to protect me. So, my life, I live my life for God. I am here to speak the word of God and to reach out to people who need to hear. I'm not just a Blasian girl with long hair or a girl with accent or a girl from Japan. I am a God's disciple. And I didn't choose him, but he chose me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I encourage you guys to be in prayer and talk to God and give everything, every worries, every negativity, give it to God. And He will bless you with things that you need it or even want. God is, God is an amazing God. I cannot see my life without God. He is who I serve. So I'm here on behalf of God to tell you that He loves you. and. He wants you to open your heart and to accept Him because He can and will make you happy and you fill your life with joy and happiness. If God says, it will happen. Trust me. I'm here to testify that depression and all the negativity and suicidal thoughts, He can take that away. I haven't had any suicidal thoughts this year and it's really amazing i thank you guys for watching and if you want to have if you want to contact me you can contact me on twitter tiffany loves tea and or instagram Mika Jazzy. so um have faith you guys because you can't do with anything without faith faith is the greatest weapon you can ever have even small as a mustard seed does anybody know what verse that's from and i guess i'll talk to you in my next video have a blessed day you guys and always have faith that's what she said i shall talk to you next time bye